for more on uh, how AI is impacting these industries, Dr. Martin Clancy joins us, Trinity College Dublin, as well as a, he's an editor and the author of Artificial Intelligence and Music Ecosystem. Good to see you. Thank you. I mean, you, you are pretty close to the perfect person to help us answer the question is, is this for real? And how are people, I guess, legally going to be able to say, okay, this is something I wrote or I did when actually they, I guess in a way they didn't, but they did. Well, that's a great question, Phil. Um, and thanks for having me on. Um, first of all, there's no problem at all about people writing music with any instrument, whether that's AI or whether that's a uh, piano or something conventional, that's, that's quite all right. It's when the, uh, the question is really comes when the machines are doing it without any humans involved. Um, what is the status of that and how much of, you know, on a spectrum of human to machine interaction, where are you in that spectrum? And, and that's where the legal parts are going to come into this. I mean, I could imagine a scenario where you ask AI to basically create a song, create the music, put it all together, and boom, there's a song and an album. And, and I mean, could it even like just release it on its own? But it's, it's got to involve a human somewhere along the way, doesn't it? Well, someone's got to listen to it. I mean, we've, we've got to bear that in mind. I mean, the computers do listen and uh, certainly whisper. Uh, open AI's a whisper is trained on I think 73 years of uh, audio, so it's 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 been trained on all of uh, um, YouTube and every other piece of recording uh, that's on the internet. Um, but thankfully, for listening pleasure, it's still only humans that are going to listen to music. Um, but I'm making a joke there. I mean, we have to we are looking at a situation that is very serious, and you know the decisions that are coming down the track are coming very fast. And I think that there's a, there's a lot in in the excitement that's, that's occurring with AI. We've seen it obviously with text to uh, image generators and uh, chat GPT, of course. But text to music, as you pointed out in your report earlier, is imminent. And that will be, you know, it's, it's alarming on a lot of levels. If you'd like, we can, we can, we can look at some of, unpack some of those um, if you'd like. All right, well, he, he, here's an inter interesting scenario, Doctor. Let, let's say we ask AI to use your voice or my voice, and let's make a song out of this, okay? Using our voice, not our real voice, but I guess something that sounds like our voice. Who owns that? I mean, we could say, make a song with Taylor Swift's voice, and does Taylor own that, or does Taylor not own it, because it's not really her voice? Okay, well, we have a couple of good examples of this. First of all, um, an artist called Holly Herndon, um, who's very proactive. Uh, she actually wrote a chapter in the book. Uh, she's an American artist. Uh, she has a, a, a machine learning um, instrument that she created called Holly Plus, and that allows people to sing with her voice. So in that sense, that's the license used of, of copyright um, it will fall onto the area, I think, I believe, of passing off. So if someone wants to sound like Phil or like Martin, should they want to sound like us, um, and we trained an AI to sound like us and we were licensed to do that, then that's, at least we'll be paid in the, in the norm. We can opt into that or opt out. I guess where it becomes contentious is where it's the law of passing off, where somebody sounds like someone who's very famous, uh, it could sound like David Bowie, and you're saying, well, that's a little bit more than a karaoke or an impersonator. That sounds exactly like David Bowie. And is that infringing? What's that infringing? Like, and so that's, that's where the question is coming in. We've never been presented with these challenges before. Um, so it's, it, we're falling on old remedies. For, right. For, and and for, look, I don't want to make light of it. I mean, this, is, this is just music. We're not talking about life and death here. But there are people out there who are very worried about where the future of AI is going towards, especially when you start eliminating the human element on this, right? Is there a way to regulate this? Or should it even be regulated by governments? And, and I guess my question would be, what government's going to regulate it? Because even if you say, well, Canada is going to do it, or Mexico is going to do it, or US is going to do it, other governments may not even recognize whatever regulation you put in there, because the AI thing doesn't understand borders. You have it. And it's a great question. And it's a really good question as well about why should we care about music? Um, I often use the example of at least with music, we can talk about marimba playing robots, not killer robots. And the questions are the same, the technologies are very similar. And music doesn't kill anybody, but we are dealing with the same issues. And music is a fundamental part of 
of in, in all of our rituals, whether we get married, how we bury people, um, our, our memories from when we were kids, when we fall in love, they were all hooked up with music. So music is a fundamental thing. And if we are changing that, where we hand that over to machines, or we, our, our relationship to that changes, um, then it's about do we care? And I think the area of regulation comes from this idea of sector specific. So people who love music, people who care about music, if, if it matters to you, it should be marked, you should be aware of what's happening and contribute to that and shape the future as, as you're doing and have fun while you're doing it. And I think right. we can love the music. So that's, that's, that's my take on it. And, and then if I take this one step further, look, we, we are in the news business, right? We produce things that we say, we produce videos, we produce what we call packages. Could I ask AI to, to make a package about the music industry or make a package about the AI? And once it does, should I disclose that to the viewer? In your case, the, the audience, should the audience be told that this was not fully created by a human? I think there is a responsibility there, especially when it moves from, if we look at, for instance, it, it, its use in news reportage, um, especially with American sports, which have been always statistically heavy. Uh, AI has been used for many years and it's been very effective. When that moves from statistical reporting of a, of a particular match to uh, an op-ed, to an opinion piece, then I think it's very important, just as we do with all forms of, uh, of news coverage, to know where it is and, and, and where on a spectrum of politics is, is, that, is, is that coming from. Um, and then you, you can make an informed choice as a user, whether that's something you, um, how you work through it. I think the question is, when we don't know what it is, in the same way as we don't know uh, the food that we eat, we like to know its problems. And we also like to work. So it's important at the moment that what we do is we, we deal with this with great excitement, and which is what well, we have. Do um, but also it's important. Doctor, um, thank you for making me excited and scared at the same time of, I, I guess, what AI is going to bring to us, not only in the music world, but, but most likely everything else that's a, uh, that might come after that. Uh, really appreciate your analysis on this uh, and your time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Phil.